Ryan Imgrund is an epidemiologist who has been extremely vocal about COVID-19 transmission in schools. He believes they've been a leading cause of spread. And he says the Ford government should have been testing schools when they opened in September and that the government failed to recognize the problem. Do you think schools have been a driving force in the spread of COVID? I absolutely think schools have been a driving force for COVID-19 here in Ontario and also worldwide. We have seen worldwide that when you move schools to online, you drastically reduce cases. And just a few minutes ago, I spoke with Education Minister Stephen Lecce, who only five days ago said schools would remain open. But he says the dramatic increase in cases during the holidays forced the government to keep them closed. And they're going to increase asymptomatic testing and provide $380 million for better ventilation for when they return. But my question is, why wasn't that done all along? Cases have been rising since schools opened, and by the holidays, 20% of schools had known cases. We're going to be looking at two priority areas of uh, expansion. The first is in asymptomatic testing. We've done that in this province, one of the only problems to do so in the Barely, highest. Barely, I might regions. add. And you Toronto. only started doing you only started doing asymptomatic testing just before the holidays. Why didn't you start it in September from day one? So you actually could have tracked what was going on. We know a lot of kids are asymptomatic. So why didn't you want to find out where they were? Well, to be fair, we're one of the first provinces, I believe the only province to have unveiled an asymptomatic pro uh, program. With respect, Minister, why wasn't all this done in September? Asymptomatic testing, uh, better PPE, better ventilation. Why wasn't this all done at the start of the school year in September? Uh, in every area, we have 3,000 more teachers that were hired over the past months from September to the present. But we you're still acknowledging what needs to be done. I'm acknowledging that our province has had an incredible success. The risk is rising and the level of positivity is rising and therefore so should our plan to respond. Now, while the government says schools could reopen in two weeks, Ryan Imgren believes they should not reopen until the province is down to 1,000 new cases a day and a 3% positivity rate. We are at 6.1% today. And Ontario's chief medical officer of health gave his most dire update to date about the spread of COVID. He says community transmission is at the worst point yet, and he expects to see 4,000 cases a day. He's concerned if the UK variant took hold, cases could reach crushing levels within a week or two. Dr. Williams also acknowledged he is considering a curfew. That's one of the things we will consider. We know that Australia did undertake that in um, the Melbourne area. And other countries have done some. Some have much different social structures than we have. So we're going to look at that uh, as well and to see what they have. That's just one of the tools that are there. Part of the challenge of a curfew is how are you going to enforce a curfew? How are you going to make sure that people are adhering to a curfew? And there's challenges in that. Now to a vaccine update and where we stand. As I told you yesterday, 48,000 more Pfizer doses were delivered on Tuesday. Before this week's latest shipment, Ontario had 148,000 Pfizer and Moderna vaccines delivered. Out of those, roughly 84,000 have been administered. That is 57% and 12,000 more than yesterday. But it means in addition to the new shipment, about 64,000 have still not been used. Yesterday, Premier Ford, who's been under intense criticism for the slow rollout, said there were no vaccines sitting in freezers. Clearly, thousands are. A spokesperson clarified with me today and says the remaining supply has been allocated and will be gone by the end of this weekend. And this week's Pfizer shipment will be gone by next weekend. And stress, the federal government needs to guarantee a steady stream of vaccines. And, of course, they can't come soon enough for hospitals where, once again, the province is in crisis mode. Sean